Hello friends and welcome to jwreasoning.com. It's been a while since we've done a video. There's so much information I'd love to share with you, but I thought this one was uh, rather timely. The uh, Watchtower Organization, or JW.org, has uh, recently released a new publication entitled, What Can the Bible Teach Us? And they claim that this is not a replacement to the T Bible Teach Book, but it's simply a more simplified way of expressing the same message or something similar to what that publication has said. Now, I, I was just skimming through this and something caught my attention. Now, please understand that I do believe that when we die, we're truly dead. I think that this is a uh, truth that the Witness Organization has correct, and I'm grateful that, uh, that you believe these things as Jehovah's Witnesses. But one of the things I wanted to point out, and the this is actually chapter six of this publication entitled, once again, it's entitled, What Can the Bible Teach Us? On page 63, under the subheading, Where Do We Go When We Die? In paragraph five, it says, Jehovah knows what happens to us when we die. And he has told us that when a person dies, his life ends. I find it interesting that they put in bold print, when a person dies, his life ends. And I agree with that, and I know that you as Jehovah's Witnesses agree with this as well. Then it says, death is the opposite of life. So when someone dies, his feelings and memories do not, do not as in bold, keep on living somewhere else. And then there's an asterisk here. Now I'm going to take you back to, the, to page 215, which is the end notes, and under the heading spirit, number 18, it says, the Bible does not teach that a separate part of a person keeps on living after he dies. And I think that we would all agree. I agree with that 100%. The Bible does not teach that. On page 67, under the truth sets us free. Now, this is where it gets very interesting, friends. I, I still agree with this. But here's what it says in paragraph 15. The truth about the dead sets us free from many wrong ideas. Well, amen to that. I think we would all agree. The Bible teaches that the dead don't feel pain or sadness. We can't speak to them, and they can't speak to us. We can't help the dead, and the dead can't help us. They can't harm us, so we don't need to be afraid of them. It says, however, many religions tell us that the dead are alive somewhere, and we can help them if we pay money to priests to those viewed as holy men. But when we know the truth about death, we are not fooled by those lies. And I agree with that. We are not fooled by those lies if we believe the truth about death. And naturally, they're referencing here about paying money. They're talking probably more than likely about Catholics and the purgatory, where they believe that you can purchase people out of this state and, and buy them into heaven. But then in the very next paragraph, paragraph 16, page 67, says, Satan uses false religion to lie to us and make us think that the dead are still alive. For example, some religions teach that when we die, a part of us keeps on living somewhere else. Does your religion teach you that? Or does it teach you what the Bible says about the dead? Satan uses lies to turn people away from Jehovah. I agree. I agree. But friends, let me ask you a question. Do you believe this? Because my understanding, according to the Jehovah's Witness belief, they do believe this, but only about the great crowd. What about the anointed? What do they teach about those who they believe are the anointed, or the 144,000, or I guess by today's standards, the, um, the faithful and discreet slave, it's a different group now, but still, about those men, if they die, they believe that they instantaneously go to heaven. In fact, before we go there, I want to share something with you about do the witnesses believe that these, these beings that go to heaven upon death, one of the anointed, can they communicate with you? Well, listen to this. Again, on page 68 of the same publication, it says in verse 18, some religions tell us that when people die, they become spirits. Such religions teach that we must respect and even be afraid of those spirits because they can become either powerful friends or terrible enemies. Many people believe that lie, 
Well, brothers and sisters, if you believe what the Watchtower is teaching you about the anointed, you are believing that lie. And I know that comes on strong. I'm not saying this to hurt you. I am not saying this to hurt you. But I want to show you from your own publication, uh, The Watchtower of January 1st, 2007, when it's talking about, this is under a um, article called The First Resurrection Now Underway. And this is on pages 25 through 30. And I don't know the exact page number. I wish I did. But this is paragraph 11 of that article. Okay. Again, the reference, you, you'll see it here. I'll put it on the uh, screen for you. And here's what it says in paragraph 11. What then can we deduce from the fact that one of the 24 elders identifies the great crowd to John? It seems that the resurrected ones of the 24 elders group, which the Watchtower says is the 144,000, okay, and that comes, you can just do a little research and find that. Most Jehovah's Witnesses know this. That the resurrected ones of the 24 elders group may be involved in communicating divine truths today. What does that mean? That means that they are communicating with the dead. That's what this means. They, according to Jehovah's Witness doctrine, the great crowd dies and returns to the dust, but part of the anointed actually go to heaven. They say, well, the body's there, but the spirit has gone to heaven. Here's what the article goes on to say, though. Why is that important? Because the correct identity of the great crowd was revealed to God's anointed servants on earth in 1935. If one of the 24 elders was used to convey that important truth, he would have had to be resurrected to heaven by 1935 at the latest. Well, when you look at the Revelation book, it all falls apart because they're saying that this one of the 24 elders group, or the 144,000, communicated divine truths to John. But if the resurrection didn't occur until 1935, how's that possible? You see, if we truly study what the Bible says and we really read and study what the organization is saying, we find that a lot of the beliefs that you've believed in and that I believed in all of my life are built on a house of cards. It just starts falling apart at the seams as we go through those things. Now, one of the things that I want to point out to you is what does God say about communication with the dead? What does he say about it? Now, let's go right to the Bible, and I'm using the, the Revised New World Translation here, Deuteronomy chapter 18, and beginning with verse 10, it says, There should not be found in you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, anyone who employs divination, anyone practicing magic, anyone who looks for omens or a sorcerer, anyone binding others with a spell, anyone who consults a spirit medium or a fortune teller or anyone who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is detestable to Jehovah. And on account of these detestable practices, Jehovah your God is driving them away from before you. So you may not be seeking communication with the dead, but the Watchtower Society is admitting that it's very possible that these dead anointed ones are communicating with them today. It's right in that watchtower that we referenced just a few moments ago. Now, when I look at the Bible and I read what it actually says, I believe what it says. I believe that the dead are truly dead. And if I turn to Luke chapter 24, and I want you to do that. This is from the Revised New World Translation. My question to you is this. What proof do we have that Jesus was resurrected? Well, the Bible tells us. If you look at Luke chapter 24, verse 1, it says, But on the first day of the week they came very early to the tomb, bringing the spices they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, and when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Interesting. The body wasn't there. This is the proof. The Watchtower admits this is the proof. In this article, March 1st, 2013, the Watchtower on page 5, this is actually the edition that they give to the public. And on page 5, here's what it says. I'm just going to read this right from this page right here, okay? It says, Paul began with the confident statement that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and was resurrected. What made Paul so sure of that? 
One reason was the testimony of many eyewitnesses. The resurrected Jesus had appeared to individuals, including Paul himself, to small groups and even to a crowd of 500, many of whom had no doubt been skeptical when they heard the news about Jesus or that Jesus had been resurrected. Most of the eyewitnesses were still alive in Paul's day. So there were eyewitnesses to the account that Jesus was resurrected. That was the proof. I believe that. Now let me ask you, if you've ever been to the funeral of one of the anointed, and you go to the funeral and they preach about this brother that he's already received his heavenly reward, that's the same thing that Christendom preaches. That's the same thing they preach about every person, but the problem is here, we've pulled this small group out and says, well, this only applies to them. But what proof do you have, friends? Because when I've been to the funeral of one of the anointed, their body is right there in the casket. They're still in the, they're in the grave. Jesus' tomb is empty. He was resurrected. Lazarus, when he was resurrected, he came out of the tomb. That was the proof that Lazarus had been resurrected. Friends, what I'm telling you is that the organization is teaching two doctrines. You will never see Jesus' face, but the Bible says that every eye will see him. The organization teaches that only the 144,000 will see him. Friends, I choose to believe what the scriptures say. I will always take scripture over what an organization or what man says. The proof that we have that Jesus is resurrected is that his tomb is empty. We have no proof whatsoever that any of the anointed are in heaven right now. I personally believe that they'll be resurrected when the, what the witnesses call the end of this system of things comes. That's when the first resurrection occurs and not before. One last thing I'd like to share with you is found here in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. It says, Then the dust returns to the earth, just as it was, this is verse 7, and the Spirit returns to the true God who gave it. Now notice it says the Spirit returns to God. It doesn't say the Spirit of a righteous man. It just says the Spirit. In other words, any man or woman who dies, their Spirit returns to God. So for them to tell you that the Spirit of these anointed return to God and that yours doesn't, that is not biblical. You can't show me that anywhere in the Bible. How do we arrive at the conclusions we arrive, arrive at? And friends, please, I'm asking you to keep studying your Bibles. Look at these things. Challenge yourself with the Word of God. Don't believe it because the watchtower says it, or I say it, or anybody else that you might trust says it. Believe it because it comes from the Word of God. And study the Scriptures to show yourselves approved. This is what we're encouraged to do. So I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you.